continuing Le Alphonse for lessons. To remain healthy, one does not sleep during the daytime and stay up through the night. The sixth reason I do not have a son, Le Alphonse, is my habit of staying up nights, not knowing how to conserve my energy. Aside from these, I have many, many other faults which are too numerous to mention. Master Yungu then said, Master Yungu, according to you then, there are many things in life you do not deserve, not only fame and the sun, but good and bad fortune are formed from one's heart. Wise people know that everything they achieve or fail at in life are only consequences of their own actions and thoughts. Only an ignorant person assumes that all is the work of fate and destiny. Master Yungu, those who have millions of dollars in this life must have cultivated the good fortune worthy of that amount in the past. Those who have thousands of dollars must also have good fortune, which is worthy of generating that sum of money. Those who die of starvation, in fact, we are meant to die in that manner. We must understand that their own past thoughts and actions created the fate of these people. The karmic result today is simply the fruit of their deeds. Heaven does nothing more than punish bad beings with the suffering they deserve and reward kind ones with the good fortune they deserve. The following section is Master Yungu's advice to Liao Fan using the views of ordinary people, persuading him to cultivate virtue. Master Yungu, bearing children is similar to bearing fruit from seeds. If the seeds are planted well, the fruits will flourish. If the seeds are not planted well, then the fruits will become malnourished. For example, if a person has accumulated enough merits and virtues for a hundred generations, then he or she will have descendants to last a hundred generations. One who accumulates enough merits and virtues to last ten generations will then have ten generations of descendants to live out that good fortune. The same goes for three generations or two generations. For those who have no descendants at all, it is because they have not accumulated enough good merits and virtues. They may have amassed offenses instead. Now that you recognize your own shortcomings, you can work to change and reform the misdeeds which cause you not to have a child or become an imperial official. You will do well to cultivate virtue and tolerance and to treat others with compassion and harmony. Also, care for your health and conserve your energy and spirit. Live as though everything of the past dissolved yesterday and all of the future begins today. If you can accomplish this, then you are a person born anew. If even our physical body is governed by the law of fit, then how can a mind of virtue and discipline not evoke a response from heaven? As said in the Taija chapter in the Chinese book of history, one may run from the decrees of heaven, but one can never escape the retribution for one's own wrong deeds. In other words, one can alter the retribution due from past deeds. But if one continues to behave immorally, then there is no chance of avoiding disaster. Master Yungu, it is also said in the book of poems, people should often reflect upon their own thoughts and actions to see if they accord with the ways of heaven. If one practices in this way, 
then good fortune will come without being sought. The choice to seek good fortune or to bring about adversity is all up to the individual. Master Yungu, Mr. Kung had predicted that you would not receive an imperial appointment or have a son. We can think of these as the decrees of heaven. But even that can still be changed. You only need to reform your improper ways, practice kind deeds, and work to accumulate merits and virtues. These are your own transactions to create good fortune. No one can take it away. How is it then possible that you will not get to enjoy it? The Yi Ching Book of Change was written to help people, uh, kind people, bring about good fortune and avoid adversity. Master Yungu, if everything is predestined with no room for change, how can we improve upon our good fortune and avoid adversity? The very first chapter of the Yi Ching Book of Change also said, families who often perform kind deeds will have an excess of good fortune to pass on to the next generations. Master Yungu, do you believe in this? Liao Fan, I understood and believed the master and gratefully paid my respects to him. Then I began to regret all my past wrongdoings, whether large or small, in front of the Buddha image. I wrote down my wish to pass the imperial examinations and vowed to complete 3,000 meritorious deeds to show my gratitude towards ancestors, earth, and heaven. Upon hearing my vow, Master Yungu showed me a chart and taught me how to keep a daily record of kind and unkind acts I committed. He told me that bad deeds could neutralize the merits I had accrued from good deeds. The Master also taught me how to recite the Junti Mantra, a way to train my mind for single-minded concentration. Only with a pure and unscattered mind could what I seek for come true. Master Yungu then said, Master Yungu, it is said those who are considered experts in the arts of writing mantras but do not know the right way to do it will be laughed at by spirits and gods. The secret behind writing mantras is the absence of thought from start to finish. In the process of drawing, one must not give rise to a single wandering thought. Even kind thoughts have to be let go of. Only under these circumstances can a mantra be successful. When one asks for or seeks something in terms of changing fate, it is important that one does it when the mind is still. In this way, wishes will be easily fulfilled. Master Yungu, Mencius stated in his Principle of Forming Destiny that Mencius, there is no difference between a long life and a short life. Master Yungu, at first glance, one would find this hard to understand. How can long life and short life be the same? In actuality, when we look within our hearts, we will find no duality, no difference. We'll see everything with eyes of equality and live morally regardless of good or bad times. If one can practice accordingly, then one can master the fate of wealth and poverty. Therefore, when we are able to create and form our own destiny, it does not matter whether we are presently rich or poor. Just as a wealthy person will do well not to become careless in his thoughts and actions because he is rich or she is rich, a poor person will not resort to committing improper deeds due to poverty. In either case, one needs to meet one's responsibilities and to be a virtuous person. 
Master Yungu. If one can practice morality regardless of conditions, then he or she will surely change a poor life into a prosperous one. And a prosperous life into an even longer lasting prosperity. One should also look upon long life and short life equally. A person who knows he or she is short lived should not think, I'm going to die anyway, so there's no point in being virtuous. I should steal and kill for my benefit while I come. No. Instead, one who already knows he or she has a short life to live can be even more diligent in cultivating kindness, hoping to gain a longer life next time, and then perhaps the merits from practicing kindness can even lengthen the present life. Master Yungu, one who is long-lived should not think, I have all the time in the world. It does not matter if I do something bad once in a while. A long life does not come easily. It is to be cherished and used to cultivate even more kindness and virtue. Otherwise, we may very well use up our long life all too soon. Master Yungu, one who understands this principle will be able to change a short life into a long life through virtuous behavior. The issue of life and death is the most critical issue of one's life. Therefore, long life and short life is also the most important issue to us. The same applies to wealth and poverty, good or bad reputation. The issue of long life and short life encompasses all of these. That is why Mencius did not need to mention the letter in his principle of creating destiny, since he had already spoken about long and short life. Liao Fan, Master Yungu then told me about Mencius' teaching on cultivating the self. Master Yungu, one who wishes to cultivate needs to do so daily and to be mindful of his or her conduct every moment, ensuring that no transgressions are made. As for changing one's destiny, that depends on the accumulation of merits, seeking for a response from the heavens. When cultivating, one needs to be aware of one's own faults and resolve to correct them, just as in curing a sickness. Perseverance is required, and attainment comes when one, one's practice matures and ripens. In that case, one's destiny will most definitely change for the better. We should walk toward severing all bad habits and thoughts. It will be quite an accomplishment for the true benefits of these teachings to be felt. Once one reaches the state of no thought, the actions of worldly people usually follow their thoughts. Whatever has to be thought is not considered natural. I know that you are still unable to accomplish the state of no thought. But if you practice reciting the Junti Mantra continuously, it will help you to overcome scattered thoughts. When you recite, you must not think of reciting, but recite consciously and diligently without any attachment. When the reciting becomes second nature, it will be effective. The essence of this practice can only be understood after one practices it. They are fun. My name used to be Shui Hai, which meant broad learning. But after receiving these teachings from Master Yungu, I changed it to Liao Fan, which means transcending the ordinary. It signified my understanding of the fact that we create our destiny and that I did not wish to be like worldly people who allow destiny to control them. From then on, I began to be constantly aware of my thoughts and actions. I was very cautious and careful in whatever I thought or did. Soon I felt quite different from before. In the past, I used to be careless and lived my days in destruction and had no self-discipline at all. 
now I find myself being naturally respectful, careful and conservative in my thoughts, speech and actions. I maintain this attitude even when I'm alone, for I know that there are spirits and gods everywhere who can see my every action and thought. Even when I encounter people who dislike or slander me, I take their insult with a patient and peaceful mind and do not feel compelled to quarrel with them. The year after I met Master Yungu, I took the preliminary imperial examination in which Mr. Kung had predicted I would come in third place. Amazingly, I came in first. Mr. Kung's predictions were beginning to lose their accuracy. He did not predict I would pass the imperial examination at all, but that autumn I did. None of these were part of my original destiny. Master Yungu had said that, Master Yungu, destiny can be changed. Leofant, and now I believe it more than ever. Although I had corrected many of my faults, I found that I could not wholeheartedly do the things I ought to do. Even if I did do them, it was forced and unnatural. I reflected within and found that I still had many shortcomings, such as seeing an opportunity to practice kindness and not being eager enough to do it, or harboring doubts when helping others in need. Yeah, fine. Sometimes I forced myself to act kindly, but my speech was still untamed and offensive. I found I could contain myself when sober, but after a few drinks, I would lose self-discipline and act without restraint. Although I often practiced kind deeds and accumulated merits, my faults and offenses were so numerous, they seemed to outnumber my good deeds. A lot of my time was spent vainly and without value. It took me more than 10 years to complete the 3,000 meritorious deeds I had vowed to do. I was not able to dedicate the merits from these 3,000 kind deeds at a temple until I returned to my hometown in the south a few years later. Then I made my second wish, and that was for a son. I vowed to complete another 3,000 good deeds. A few years later, your mother gave birth to you and named you Tianchi. Every time I performed a kind deed, I would record it in a book. Your mother, who could not read or write, would use a goose feather dipped in ink and make a red circle on the calendar for every kind deed she did. Sometimes she gave food to the poor or bought living creatures from the marketplace to free in the wild. She recorded all of this with her circles on the calendar. At times, she could accumulate more than 10 red circles in one day. Every day would practice like this, and in four years, the 3,000 deeds were completed. Again, I made the dedications, this time in our home. On September 13th of that same year, I made my third wish, and that was to pass the next level of the imperial examination the Jinshar level. I also vowed to complete 10,000 meritorious deeds. After three years, I attained my wish and passed the Jinshar level. I was also made the mayor of Baudi province. While in that office, I prepared a small book to record my merits and faults and called it the Book of Discipline in the Mind. The book was called Disciplining the Mind in Hopes of Helping People Avoid Selfish and Improper Thoughts. Leofan, from that day, I recorded all my good and bad deeds in that book and kept it on my desk. Every evening, I would burn incense and make a report of my deed to the heavens at a little altar in the garden. Once, your mother was concerned when she saw that I had not accumulated much merit and asked Tianchi's mother, in the past, I was able to help you in your accumulation of kind deeds. 
and were able to complete the 3,000 meritorious deeds. Now, you have made a vow to complete 10,000 kind deeds. And there are fewer opportunities to practice them here at the government residence. How long will it be before your vow can be fulfilled? Leo Fan, that night, after your mother spoke these words, I dreamed of a heavenly being and told him of my difficulty in completing the 10,000 kind deeds. The heavenly being said to me, heavenly being, when you became mayor, you reduced the taxes on the rice fields. That was a great kind deed. And that deed itself was worth 10,000 merits. Your vow is already fulfilled. Leofan, as it turned out, the farmers in Baudi province had to pay a very high tax. And when I came to office, I reduced the taxes on the rice fields by nearly half. But still I felt strange. How did the heavenly being know about the tax reduction? Leofan still held doubts and wondered how a single deed could be worth 10,000 merits. Leofan, coincidentally, the Zen master, Huan Yu, was traveling from the five Plato mountains and stopped briefly in Baudi. I invited him to the government residence, told him of my dream, and asked whether it was believable. Master Huan Yu said, Master Huan Yu, when doing kind deeds, one must be true and sincere and not seek any rewards or act with falsity. If one does a kind deed with such a true and sincere heart, then one deed can indeed be worth the merits from 10,000 kind deeds. Besides, your act of reducing the taxes in the province benefits more than 10,000 people. You have relieved the suffering of heavy taxes on all these farmers. The good fortune you will gain from this act will surely be great. Leofan, upon hearing his words, I was overwhelmed with gratitude and immediately gave all my savings for him to take back to the five Plato mountains. I asked the master to use the money for a food offering for 10,000 monks and to dedicate the merits for me. Mr. Kung had predicted that I would die at the age of 53. However, I survived that year with no illnesses at all, although I did not ask the heavens for a longer life. Now I am 69 already. I have lived 16 more years than what was destined. The Chinese book of history had said, the way of the heavens is not determined and neither is one's destiny. Destiny is not set, but is only created and determined by oneself. Leofan, these are all true. And I have come to understand that both good fortune and adversity are results of one's own doings. These are truly the words of sages and saints. If one were to say that good fortune and adversity are all determined by the heavens, then I would consider that person to be ordinary. Tianchi, my son, I wonder how your life will be. In any case of destiny, we should always prepare for the worst. Therefore, even in times of prosperity, act as if you were not. And when things are going your way, be mindful of adversity. When you are wealthy, be mindful of poverty. And when loved and respected by all, remain careful and conservative. When the family is greatly respected and revered, carry yourself humbly. When your learning is broad and deep, always think of it as slight and keep it humbly within. If one can cultivate the mind, then virtue and morality will grow and good fortune will increase on its own. Leofan, when mindful of the past, we can spread the virtues of our ancestors. When mindful of the present, 
we can conceal the faults of our own parents. This is what Mencius called Mencius. Parents caring for children and children caring for parents. Leofan, when mindful of the nation, we can think of how we can repay its kindness to us. And when mindful of the family, we can think of how to bring about good fortune. When mindful of the outside, think of how to help those in need around us. And when mindful of within, think of how to prevent wrong thoughts and improper actions from arising. These six contemplations are all positive ways to cultivate good character. If one can practice accordingly, one will surely become a truly honorable person. Leofan, one needs to be able to detect one's faults every day in order to correct them every day. If one is unable to detect any faults in oneself, then improvement of character is out of the question. There are many intelligent people in the world who refuse to cultivate morality and virtue and cannot put forth diligent effort in their work. Their failures later in life are owed to a single word. Laziness. Tianqi. The teachings of Master Yunggu are truly the most worthy, profound, real, and proper teachings. And I hope you will study them closely and practice them with all your effort. You must use your time wisely and not let it slip by in vain.